Hello everyone, and welcome to my Days of Our Lives official. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Steve stops Mark in his tracks in Paris before he can shoot Chad. When Chad inquires as to what is going on, Steve responds, this woman is not Abigail. Steve refers to her as a forger and discloses that Kayla retook the DNA test, proving that she is not his spouse. Days, Steve tells the truth. When Abigail visits her brother, Steve informs Chad that Mark fabricated the DNA test findings. Chad queries Abby about its veracity, but judging from her expression, it is. She sobs, saying she is not Abigail. Chad finds it hard to accept that Abigail has passed away. If Mark is the woman's boyfriend, he inquires. He is her brother, she explains. While Chad is seeking explanations, Steve believes it's time to call the police. Abigail examines Mark's days. After dragging her into a different room, Chad demands at her to begin speaking. Why is she posing as his deceased wife, he wonders. She needs him to understand that Clyde came up with the scheme and it wasn't her idea. Why would Clyde do this, Chad wonders. She sobs because she doesn't know and believes he intended to torment him in addition to his money. She claimed to be a dead woman for money, and Chad exclaims that she doesn't even care about him. He can't believe it. She sobs, telling him that she truly does feel something for him, even though she doesn't think he will. Days to respond, Chad demands. Although Chad doesn't buy that, she is adamant that she loves him and didn't mean any harm. She detested lying to him, and the longer she lied to him, the harder it became as she started to fall for him. It's true, even if she knows he doesn't need to hear it. How did she know his and Abby's wedding vows, Chad wonders. She acknowledges that she discovered Abigail's vows on paper as she looked through a box of memorabilia in the attic. She makes him feel this way, and he calls her sick and screwed up. He screams that if she really cared about him, she would have told him the truth before her brother showed there to murder him and before he believed he had the love of his life back. She moved in front of Mark to stop him even though she had no idea he was going to kill him. His money was to be given to Clyde by her husband, and that was to be the end of it. When Chad learned that his assets had been taken, he asked how she planned to explain. Admittedly, she was always supposed to vanish. He believes that either Clyde or her brother felt that it would be simpler for her if he was deceased. She adamantly claims she was unaware of that aspect of the strategy. Chad Days is informed of the truth by Cat. Chad acknowledges that he had a gut feeling that something wasn't right, and he believes that's why he trusted her, he really wanted this to be real. He hoped Abigail had returned to him and his children. He was pain-free for the first time since Abby's passing. He has to grieve her once more now. He claims that Abigail's parents will burn in hell if they find out. Thank God he kept her a secret from his children. The woman reveals that's why she wanted them to visit Paris and avoided meeting them. She adamantly states that Clyde made her and Mark do this even though they didn't want to. She says that Clyde threatened to kill their mother if they didn't comply with his demands. She claims that his guys have been holding her captive and that they will execute her if they cannot get Clyde the money. How does he know it's not simply another lie, Chad wonders. She assures him that she doesn't count on his belief. He claims not even to know her identity. She tells him her name is Kat, which is short for Katrina, and her mother gave her the nickname. Although Chad is unsure if she is telling the truth or not, he is aware that she and her brother have cruelly deceived everyone who has ever loved Abby. He vows that he will hold her accountable for her actions. Steve returns to the other room and ties up an unconscious Mark in a chair. When JJ gets here, he wants to know what his uncle Steve is doing here and what is going on with this Salem doctor. Steve claims that this man, who is the brother of the lady posing as Abigail, attempted to assassinate Chad. JJ fears having to tell his dad the truth now that he knows his mother was correct all along. Before they call Jack, Steve believes they need find out more information. Steve thinks Clyde Weston is connected in some way. Steve nods Mark for days. When Mark at last comes to, Steve informs him that they know the truth. While they talk, his sister is working through issues with Chad. JJ queries what's happening. 
Talking about Abigail's revival over the phone at the De Mara home, Kristen tells Mr. Shin that the board and he have given her a lot to consider. After ending the call, she enters the living room where Xander is waiting. She informs him that she wasn't prepared for him and that since Brady is in jail, she won't be giving him the serum. She is told by Xander that Brady is free and that his mother has been taken into custody as the true offender. He informs her of what transpired and expresses shock that she hasn't read about it in the newspaper. She says she just returned from a Chicago board meeting. Xander informs her that he and Sarah persuaded her brother to release Brady even though he didn't want to. He requests the serum, but Kristen needs to make sure. She claims she should be able to call Brady if he is available. Xander beseeches the remedy. Days. After Brady is freed from the Salem Police Department, Sarah is there to greet him. She has some things to say to him, but she's happy that he's free and that the correct person is in jail. After they make the decision to enter the conference room, Brady receives a call from Kristen. He accepts it and says he's going home shortly. She invites him to come visit Rachel. She also wants to know how his release happened. Brady's presence makes Sarah joyful. Brady and Sarah speak after the call. Sarah regrets spending months holding him responsible for her accident. Brady claims that because of Fiona, he too believed he was guilty. Sarah claims that she was the one who reported him to the police, and she would understand if he never forgave her. Brady accepts her forgiveness, but he also needs to accept that Fiona was able to frame him because he was weak and relapsed. Give himself credit for being a good man who had the wisdom to avoid driving that evening, according to Sarah. Refusing, he queries Sarah as to why she designated him as the driver. Was she perplexed? Admittedly, Sarah lied. Sarah tells Brady the truth. Brady is astonished that she would lie to get him to pay, even though he knows she wanted him to. Sarah assures him it wasn't a falsehood meant to hurt him. Now that he's had some time to reflect, he believes she was attempting to shield Xander and prevent him from killing him. He recounts the incidents from the night he was taken into custody and says he thinks she told the police lies to prevent Xander from killing someone. Brady assures Sarah that she doesn't need to say anything because he can know she's correct as she fights back the tears. He doesn't hold it against Xander for seeking retribution, and she believed it was better for a guilty man to go to jail than for her child's father to remain in prison. She gives him thanks. He is aware that she made an effort to retract her statement and act morally. Brady pardons Sarah days. Sarah affirms that she did, but she also acknowledges that part of the reason she did so was that they were offered an experimental serum in exchange for her and Xander dropping their legal action against him. Brady knows who made this offer to them. Upon returning to the mansion, Kristen informs Xander that Brady has been freed after their conversation. But as she found out, neither Eric nor Sarah took any action to assist Brady after realizing that he was innocent. She declares that she will keep the serum. She was reminded by Xander and Sarah that they persuaded EJ to free Brady. He would have finally had to drop the charges, according to Kristen. Thankfully, she informs him that she is feeling giving and will give him the serum in exchange for something. She's after Titan. Titan days what Kristen wants. Xander argues that she shouldn't expect him to give her a billion-dollar business and questions why she needs his business when she already has one. Kristen believes that by fusing Titan and Demera, she will become unstoppable. She clarifies that the Demera board is beginning to lose faith in her due to their dissatisfaction with the revenue stream and expectations. She claims that if she had Titan, she would win back their faith and become Demera's most successful CEO to date. She is informed by Xander that he will not be spending time with his father. Xander and Kristen Days Xander claims she has the serum to create a fortune, therefore she doesn't need Titan. According to Kristen, it will take years for the serum to be commercialized, and in the interim, one of her brothers might seize control of the business. He still won't give his worst enemy's daughter control of his father's business. She refers to it as a tiny payment to assist Sarah. Brady converses with Kristen days. Brady visits later while Kristen is at work. She is overjoyed to see him and leaps into his arms. Brady wonders if Sarah is still going to give her the serum after telling her that she told him about the agreement they made. 
According to Kristen, she is, and she has made plans with Xander. Xander goes back to Sarah's house. She claims that after speaking with Brady, he understood why she had lied and is now forgiving her. She inquires about Kristen's experience. Kristen will provide them the serum, according to Xander, but she demands his family's legacy in exchange. In days, Xander fills Sarah in. Marlena talks to Kayla at the hospital, informing her that Brady is being released from prison. Though she is thrilled for her, Kayla is preoccupied on her phone. She reveals that she is expecting to hear from Steve and that he is in Paris attempting to prevent Chad from marrying Abigail, who isn't Abigail after all. Kayla updates her on the most recent happenings with Mark and the DNA testing. When they return to Brady, Marlena is relieved that he is no longer in trouble and that it has nothing to do with Kristen, who is still attempting to win him back. John looks happy to Kayla, and Marlena verifies that he is. According to her, John always thought there was more to what had occurred. He's with his dad at an old family farm, but he wishes he could be here. Kayla and Marlena catch up days later. They go back to the female imposter. They remember Steve and John finding her, and Kayla hopes Steve will ask her some questions. Marlena finds it all quite bizarre, one minute John was in Italy placing flowers on Katharina's tomb, and the next he finds himself taken prisoner in Poplar Bluff. Kayla is aware that John was never able to get the necessary closure with Katharina. Marlena claims he has no self-forgiveness for ending a life. Kayla finds it depressing, and Marlena believes John will always be troubled by Katharina's passing.